In this video, we're going to go over electric field and electric field lines. The electric field is denoted by capital E, and it's a vector, hence the arrow hat. The electric field describes the effect of a charge on its surroundings. To better understand how this works, let's consider the analogy with gravity, which you can already see the equation of the electric field is very similar to that of the equation for gravitational field. So when we think about gravity, we're thinking about the Earth. So the Earth is a mass that exerts a gravitational field around it. And the gravitational field is not something we can see. It's all around us, but we can't see it. However, if we put another mass into the gravitational field, that mass will experience a gravitational force from the Earth. So the electric field works the same way. A charge exerts an electric field around itself. By itself, that field won't do anything. But if you put another charge into that electric field, then that charge will experience an electric force from the original charge that exerted that electric field. Okay, so these equations, we've seen the variables before, Coulomb's constant, charge, and radius squared. So these uh, equations will allow us to calculate the magnitudes of the electric field and the gravitational field, but they don't tell us the direction. Now, for gravitational field, the direction is pretty straightforward because it is always toward the mass exerting the gravitational field, which in our case would be the Earth. For the electric field, it's a little bit more complicated because whereas mass is always a positive value, charge can be positive or negative. So for electric field, the direction is going to be toward negative charges and away from positive charges. So this describes the direction of electric fields. And where this definition actually comes from is the, the, or the formal definition is, if you want to figure out the direction of an electric field, you place a positive test charge at a certain position. And depending on what direction that positive test charge moves, that's the direction of the electric field. And it just so happens that positive test charges will move away from positive charges and toward negative charges. Okay. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, in terms of the gravitational field, we don't often use this equation in mechanics. Often we just use 10 meters per second squared. And that's because here on the Earth, the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth are such large values that it's hard for us to change them uh, on the Earth. So usually we use a simplified version of the equation, which is simply f of g equals mg. Now, we do have a version of this equation as well for the electric force. And it works if we know what the value of the electric field is. So you can say that the electric force is also equal to QE. So this equation, again, very much analogous to gravitational force. If you know what the electric field is, you can multiply it by the charge, and that will tell you what the electric force will be. And for this equation, you can actually take note, electric force and electric field are vectors. So if the charge is positive, the electric force is in the same direction as the electric field. And if charge is negative, the electric force is in the opposite direction of the electric field. Okay. So now let's talk about electric field lines. As I mentioned, we cannot see electric fields. So one thing that helps us to understand how electric fields work is to draw diagrams to visualize the electric fields. And here, if we have a negative charge, well, remember that positive test charges move towards negative charges. So therefore, electric field lines point towards negative charges. So this is what the electric field lines would look like for a negative charge. For a positive charge, it's essentially the opposite. A positive test charge would move away from a positive charge. So the electric field lines point away from positive charges. So if you think about this diagram, this doesn't sound very interesting if it's always towards a positive charge and away from, uh, or sorry, towards a negative charge and away from positive charges. It seems like they always look the same. Well, there's a couple bits of information that's actually pretty handy from electric field lines. One of them is that the density 
of the field lines is proportional to the strength of the electric field. So what I mean by that is, if you look at either of these diagrams, if you're at a position that is close to the charge, if you look at the spacing between the charges, it's very, the spacing between the field lines is very small, meaning that close to the charge, the electric field is strong. As you move away from the charge, the spacing between the field lines gets larger. This means that the electric field is weaker as you move away from the charge. This is not surprising because we know that the magnitude of the electric field is inversely proportional to the radius, the distance from the charge squared. Now, something else that's helpful is, well, you can use the density of the field lines to represent different magnitudes of charges. So for instance, this charge is a charge of plus Q. How would we draw the field lines differently for something with a charge of plus 2Q? Well, if it has twice the charge, that means the electric field is twice as strong. So the easiest way to represent this is to draw twice the number of field lines. So if you have a greater density of electric field lines as we have here, then we can acknowledge that this charge has a greater magnitude than this charge. Okay. So the last thing I want to look at then is, what do the electric field lines look like if you have more than one charge? And in the first case, we'll look at a dipole where we have equal and opposite charges. And it's actually fairly straightforward because we know the field lines point away from positive charges and towards negative charges. So the field lines will actually just point towards the negative charge from the positive charge. So we'll get field lines that look like this. And of course, it can only work so well, so at some point, it's not direct from one charge to the other. But you can see how the field lines form when you have more than one charge interacting with each other. The other thing is, these field lines still describe the direction that a positive test charge would move. So that means, if you were to put a positive test charge at this point, uh, it would move in a direction that it's tangent to the field line, so it would move to the right. So that's what we can also learn from field lines. So in the last case, we can consider if we have two positive charges. Well, their field lines point away from positive charges, and you can't point from one positive charge to the other. So you can see that if you have two positive charges, how their field lines will essentially curve and bend away. Okay, so this is essentially what electric field lines look like for different situations. And here we have different equations that we can use to calculate the magnitude of the electric field.